Yep. Yeah. You guessed it. It's time for your rotten theology lesson. I just thought of something. It says in the Bible, they talk about the love of God for mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world. In, in Romans, Paul is writing, Perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commends his love toward us, and that while we were, were that while we were yet sinners, his enemies, Christ died for the ungodly. On the surface, it sounds like, wow, what love! God would die for his enemies. I mean, what man is in his right mind would die for his enemies? People who want to kill him. What man is in his right mind would send his son to die for another person who wanted to kill this? He kill him. If I had a son and I had an enemy who wanted to kill me, and I send my son to die for this enemy, wow, that would be love. Get your head out of the fucking clouds unless you can get your foot, if you can, unless you can. Get your feet on the ground at the same fucking time. Yes, Jesus died for even those who don't, will not get saved. Jesus died for their sins. But think about it. He died as for his enemies because he knew that it would make him make them not his enemies. And 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 the question I just thought of this question. If nobody would have gotten saved, the only reason Jesus died for his enemies, those who or those who will not get saved, those who are going to hell anyways, is because his death, because of those who would accept the sacrifice and become his followers, his worshippers, his friends. That's the only, if, if Jesus knew, and God knew that, Jesus died on that cross. Not one person would get saved. Would he have died on that cross for his enemies? Hell no. He only died for his enemies because of those who would of his enemies who would get saved and no longer be his enemies. It's, which begs another question. If I had been the only one would he have died for me, or would he just have zodded me out and sent me to hell and started over? Because what's the difference between one person praising your name, stroking your ego for all eternity, and as opposed to hundreds of millions of saved, redeemed, born again Christians stroking God's ego? God's love. Don't fool yourselves. It ain't what it, it it ain't what you think. God does not love you for you. God only loves you for his Christ's sake. So don't lie to me this bullshit about love. Love does not exist. Love does not exist. It never did and never ever. Love does not exist. It never did and love does not exist. It never did and it never. Love does not exist. It never did and it never fucking. I curse the Holy Ghost. I, I curse all, the Holy Ghost is a pork eating dog spirit. If I don't say that right, love does not exist. It never did and it never fucking will. I, love does not exist. It never did and it never. Love does not exist. It never did and it never. Love does not exist, it never did, and it never fucking will. Love does not exist, it never did, and it never fucking will. Love does not exist, it never did, and it never fucking will. Finally, God fucking damn it. I swear with the word of God that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of a filthy, unclean, demonic dog that eats pork and licks up pork shit if I do not get my full speech back able to rap again and living the life I want to live perfectly pain free carefree just like a teenager and all of my and all the rest and oh do not hand me this goddamn fucking bullshit 
God loves us not because of who we are, but because who He is. Because it's, it is His nature to love. God is love. Just like the sun. It is the, it is the sun's nature to shine. The sun shines equally on the rose garden as it does upon the shit heap. There is nothing. The shit heap cannot clean itself up to make the sun shine on shine upon it any brighter. Nor can the rose garden make itself any less splendid. And in doing so, if it does so, the, the sun will still shine just as bright and powerful fully upon it. And yet these motherfucking Jonathan Edwards, Tim Conway, A.W. Tozer, Paul Washer say the reason God loves us is because first he loves his son and because we are in the image of a son. I thought God loves, I, I thought God loved us because of who he is not because of who we are. But you're saying God loves us only because we're made in His image, and that when we sin, mar the image so much, God will no longer, no longer love us. But as Paul Washer says, God is love, but this love and God hates. God hates the sinner. I thought God would love. He loved us, not because who we are, saint or sinner, but because who He is. And you got that fucking shit wrong. They got me there is no such thing as God's unconditional love because God is not love. Well, not as we define love, which means to love somebody else with selfless love. There is no such thing as selfless love with God because it's all about God, heavenly, the heaven, the heavenly selfish one. Holy self, holy selfishness, holy fucking ego. What a grandiose megalomaniacal mega, 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 mega fucking ego that he would hate people who have no choice in the matter. They never heard the gospel, and yet God hates them for doing something they had no power over, not doing whatever. God, I hate you. I wish it had been God the Father on that fucking cross. And I could have been one of those Roman soldiers with one of those whips. I have a lot of... I have a lot of... I'd have a lot of reasons. To rip... To whip God the Father. And here's something else. Please don't hand me this fucking bullshit. Passing the buck. Passing the blame on the man. For this world being a sinful world. Oh, it's all Adam and Eve's it's all Adam and Eve's fault. Man is to blame. Man is to blame for this world being such a miserable place, because God didn't create this world this way to begin with. It was man's sin. Get your head off of if you can't ha if your feet can't touch the ground. Get your head out of the goddamn clouds. If you can't touch the ground to the feet at the same time, you motherfuckers. Look, who in the fuck created Adam and Eve in the first goddamn place? In such a way, knowing damn well that they would have fucking sinned and fucked all this world up. Yep, you guessed it. And God himself even fesses up to it when he says... I create good and I create evil. God, stick your nose in that and read it and weep. And then stick your nose. I'm so sick of you, God. All for. All to get your eagle stroked for all eternity. You created a creation that's gonna have the majority of it. Collateral fucking damage burning forever and ever and ever. A lake of fire because you're not God enough. You're not powerful enough. You are, you're not smart enough to devise a plan of salvation to save the damned. Or worse yet, you're an evil spirit in that you purposely created the generation so that there would be damned, so that you could show off not just your bright, cheery colors. 
but your dark foreboding wrath. Because let's face it, the big picture is simply a reflection of who you are. And no picture would be complete, complete with only bright cherry colors. It has to have the dark foreboding colors also. If that's true with a human painter, how much more true is it of God the painter? So God, I hate you. I hate you for hating. I hate you for hating the sinners. God is love, but this loving God hates. I can understand you being angry at him, but hating the sinners, I, I hate you, God. Spoozy. Where's Pants? Pit, Who's he? We spit, spit, spit. We 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 spit. We